Hello and welcome to Allergies with Aya, a podcast all about food allergies and related food hypersensitivities. Growing up with food allergies, being a food allergy awareness advocate, studying and researching food allergies, and now working in the food hypersensitivity regulation field, and getting to interact with world leading researchers and experts, I have developed a passion for understanding all aspects of food allergy and other food hypersensitivities. In this podcast, we will be taking a closer look at the science behind food hypersensitivity and dissect some of the misinformation we often read or hear about. We will also hear stories from people with lived experience. My aim is to create a scientifically curious community and to get you interested in the science behind food allergies and other food hypersensitivities. Hello all! My final podcast for this series is a bonus episode for the scientists out there who are interested in my master's research project, investigating the genetic determinants of IgE-mediated food allergy. I will be sharing a recording of my poster presentation that I had to complete online due to COVID lockdown in 2020. It gives you a glimpse of the research that I conducted in my master's year. I describe the aims of the project with methods and results. The recording is about five minutes long and does contain lots of scientific jargon. So please feel free to stop the podcast at any time and search meanings up or alternatively head over to my website Allergies with Aya for terminology explanations and a script of this episode along with my poster presentation. I will talk a little bit about the poster presentation and describe the recording in more detail after. So here goes. I hope you enjoy. This year, I completed a systematic review and candidate gene study on the genetics of IgE food allergy. IgE food allergy is a heritable disease with a complex interplay between genetic susceptibility and environmental triggers. It elicits a pathological and potentially fatal immune reaction upon exposure to certain food proteins. Understanding the genetics can allow us to put prevention strategies in place to reduce those at risk from developing IgE food allergy. Saunia Tell 2019 investigated the genetics of paediatric food allergy in a systematic review and identified genes for further investigation. We sought to add to this knowledge. Therefore, our first aim was to perform a literature review to compile a database of potential susceptibility SNPs and genes. Our second aim was to investigate this list in a fully genotyped food sensitized birth cohort from the Manchester Asthma and Allergy Study. Medline, Embase and PubMed were searched. Search 1 was updated from Saunia Tell's search strategy to collect new publications. Search 2, we removed age restrictions and included a wider range of allergens. The 32 studies used in Saunia Tell's review were revised. For the candidate gene study, we included six phenotypes from the mass cohort, age 5 or 8, who were either food or inhalant sensitized or atopic. Prior to this study, additional genotypes types from the mass cohort were imputed. We used SNP tests for frequentist association testing and ranked outputs based on p-value, info scores and allele frequency. The functional properties of the top SNPs were annotated in the VEP. Locusum and LD proxy were used to visualise SNPs and LD with candidate SNPs. Missense variants were analysed using Polyphen 2 and SIFT. Overall, seven studies were identified using Search Strategy 1 and 15 using Search Strategy 2. 20 studies were included from Saunia Tell's review. 46 gene regions were significantly associated with IgE food allergy. The HLA region was most commonly investigated, followed by FLG, STAT6, IL4, IL10, CD14 and C11 or 30. 93% of genes were involved in regulatory pathways. It was not surprising that 20% were involved in the chemokine cytokine pathway, as this is responsible for triggering allergy symptoms. We identified mostly intronic SNPs associated to sensitization in the mass cohort. There were more cases compared to controls who had the candidate SNPs for any atopic and food sensitized age 5, suggesting these SNPs were contributing to sensitization in a deleterious manner. Whilst there were more controls with the inhalant sensitized age 8 SNP, suggesting it had a protective effect on the phenotype. Most SNPs in high LD with the candidate SNPs were intron variants. 
Intron variants could have affected alternative splicing of the mRNA. However, without further investigation by qPCR and Western blot, it was difficult to know their effect on protein function. We identified a damaging, with confidence, missense SNP in high LD with a top SNP for inhalant sensitization at age 5, which we presumed was more likely contributing to the phenotype. Overall, we used our database to identify candidate SNPs, which were nominally associated to sensitization status in mass. Interestingly, Previous GWAS studies have identified our inhalant age 5 candidate SNP as a risk factor in asthma, and numerous studies have shown that asthma is a very important characteristic of food allergy. The damaging missense variant in high LD with this SNP was found in the IL1-RL1 gene, which codes for a receptor situated on the surface of effector cells involved in inflammatory signaling. This missense SNP causes a glutamine to leucine amino acid substitution. Glutamine is polar and frequently appears in the binding site of receptors. Leucine, on the other hand, is nonpolar and unreactive. Thus, it is biologically plausible that this substitution could alter the receptor's ligand recognition ability. Given more time, a TACMAN genotyping assay would have been developed for replication in an independent food allergic cohort from the Europravel study. Future studies should combine our genomic data with transcriptome data to understand how these SNPs impact food allergy etiology. I would like to thank Professor Claire Mills, Dr John Curtin and Dr Elaine Gorson and the Mills Lab Group, without whom this project would not be possible. So in this recording, I essentially describe that IgE-mediated food allergy is heritable meaning that it has a genetic component to it. And it is a trait that can be passed down from parent to child through genes. I also describe it as a complex disease because many factors can contribute to the development of food allergy, such as various genes and genetic variants, environmental factors and lifestyle factors, and how understanding the risk factors that cause the development of food allergy is important so that we can understand how to prevent its development. This is why I decided really to investigate the genetic determinants of food allergy. So my first aim was to review all the literature that had previously been conducted on this topic and to create a list of potential genetic variations called SNPs. Now SNPs stand for single nucleotide polymorphism and is a genetic or genomic variant at a single base position in the DNA. SNPs are very common and are the most common type of genetic variation amongst people, so are extremely useful to study when investigating complex diseases such as IgE-mediated food allergy. I essentially trolled the internet and journals searching for papers investigating genes and SNPs associated to IgE-mediated food allergy, and I identified 241 SNPs in 46 gene regions that were associated to IgE-mediated food allergy. I then created a database of everything I found. I found that many papers investigated SNPs within the human leukocyte antigen, or HLA locus. The HLA locus is a complex of genes on chromosomes chromosome 6 in humans, which codes for a group of proteins found on the surface of cells that help the immune system recognise foreign substances. My search also identified SNPs and variations in the FLG gene, which codes for filaggrin, a structural protein involved in maintaining the skin's structural integrity, as well as other gene regions, which code for proteins involved in the immune response. I talk about some of these genes in episode 3, which discusses the risk factors of developing food allergy. So if you are interested in learning more about them, then head over to that episode or my blog post about it. I then investigated this database of genetic variations and genes in a cohort who are food sensitised. This cohort were fully genotyped and came from the Manchester Asthma and Allergy Study. I investigated the list of genetic variations, so SNPs, and genes by using various bio informatic tools. So all those kind of terms that I was using in my recording probably were bioinformatics 
programmatic tools, <laughs> such as Impu too. And I identified several variations associated to allergy and inhalant sensitization in the cohort. The most interesting being a variation found in a gene called IL1RL1, which codes for interleukin 1 receptor like 1. And this is a receptor situated on the surface of effector cells involved in inflammatory signaling. IL1RL1 is a highly researched gene associated with asthma, and variations in this gene were found to be associated to inhalant sensitization in our cohort. Now, of course, given more time, I would have conducted further studies to investigate this variant in another independent food allergic cohort. However, I was unable to do this. Now that's the end of this episode and this series. I really hope that you have enjoyed listening. And that's a wrap guys. So thank you so much for listening. Please do leave a review and share this podcast with friends and family. You can also follow me on social media, which will be provided in the show notes, as well as everything that was discussed today with citations if appropriate, of course. Now, until next time, thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye now. Now, just a disclaimer that the information in this podcast is for information purposes only and is not intended to be used as medical advice. I am not a medical doctor, so I have never and will never give medical advice. You should always speak to a healthcare provider about your unique health needs. My opinions are entirely my own and do not reflect the organisation's opinions that I work for. Due to the nature of my work, I can sometimes have access to unpublished literature. However, due to confidentiality, I will strictly not be discussing unpublished literature. I only discuss findings from published literature in this podcast. I am not responsible for any claims related to procedures, professionals, products or methods discussed in this podcast and I do not approve or endorse any products, professionals, services or methods that may be discussed in this podcast. This podcast was written and produced by me, Iowafi. Music was also produced by me, Iowafi, using GarageBand.